Go ahead, Mark. Hello, uh, thank, thank you, uh, Mayor Pete. Uh, Congressman Lowenthal, uh, as you know, we've met before. I'm uh, Mark Turco, met. City of Los Alamitos. We just wanna thank you today for your time. Uh, we know you have a very busy schedule, so we appreciate you uh, joining us today. Yes, I'm, I'm glad to be there, yeah. Yes, and uh, so uh, again, we're thankful that you uh, will spend an hour with us. We appreciate your time, we know it's very valuable. Uh, Congressman uh, Alan Lowenthal is serving his fourth term in the House of Representatives representing Actually, California. fifth term now. Fifth, fifth term. term. Oh, fifth, all right. Well, five, five, fifth. five. Very yes. good. Uh, representing Eastern LA County and uh, parts of Western Orange County. Uh, yes. Before that, you served as a member of the California State Legislature and in the uh, city of Long Beach uh, uh, City Council. Yes. You have... Uh, many accomplishments, and I'll let you choose which ones you would like to share with us, but one of your most recent accomplishments was celebrating a major milestone birthday, so we wish you a belated happy birthday and Thank many you. more years of good health. And with that, Thank I'll you. Ask, ask you if you would uh, provide us with an overview of the district and let us know some of the uh, important things you're focusing on. You want me to start now? Yes, okay. Please. Well, thank you both. Uh, you know, I have a special... Uh, um, uh, attachment to Los Alamitos, uh, to all the districts in my district, but uh, cities in my district, because my grandchildren, the three of them, are all in Los Alamitos in the public schools there. And uh, uh, they've been very fortunate to have that hybrid system where they work both at school, they're not, uh, seven, nine, and 11 uh, in, in the Los Alamitos school district. And and uh, Cyprus has a special attachment to me because one of my first legislative directors in Congress is now on the city council of Cyprus, Francis Marquez, who I is a dear friend and uh, she, I, I, I just appreciate everything that she does and I was so pleased to see. So I have, besides representing both cities, I, I also, I, I think this, uh, the city of uh, Seal Beach may be on also, but I'm not real, even though they're part of Los Alamitos, the school district, I do not represent the city of Seal Beach. What I thought I would do briefly is just, you know, uh, because I'm gonna be talking a lot about and answering questions about COVID relief, but I just wanna quickly mention some of the things the house has passed in this last year. Uh, in the last, actually the last two to three months, we passed, uh, voter safety, that's HR1, that's For the People Act, that really upgrades our voting systems, ensures that individuals uh, can have full voting rights, they, that, that, they, that they can vote by absentee ballot nationwide. They, they, it simplifies it, it reduces long terms, it really wants to get everybody voting. Then we also pass out of that, now that was out of this out of the House, and actually today in the Senate, they're taking up this bill for the People Act. It also has deadlock. That bill is also interesting because I worked on uh, getting rid of gerrymandering, and that's in the bill, and campaign finance reform, and that's all called for the People Act. Then we also passed out of the House the American Dream and Promise Act, which uh, provides a path to citizenship for dreamers and those with temporary protected status, and that would include as many as 2.3 million dreamers and 700,000 DACA recipients. And this week, and you know, after seeing the horrors of, of what took place in Atlanta and now what took place in Boulder, Colorado, we also passed the background before this, we passed the background bipartisan, in a bipartisan way, Background Checks Act of 2021, which would have background checks on all gun sales, uh, close the loopholes for gun shows and keep guns out of the hands of, of, of wrong people. So that's kind of what we've been working on. There have been other bills that we've also passed, like uh, we reauthorized VAWA, which is Violence Against Women Act, and we extended the deadline for states to complete the certification of the, of the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, but those are just some of the things that Congress has passed, and I'm going to let you ask me questions about the major issue, which has to do with COVID-19. Thank you, Congressman. 
Uh, beyond the direct funding our cities will receive, what additional resources are available in the Rescue America plan for cities <coughs> to recover from the effects of the pandemic? Well, the entire bill, the entire is, uh, uh, is about helping people, whether it's, you know, through extended child care or renter's relief or mortgage relief or small business support. Uh, there are just a lot of programs in the bill to help people survive. So some of it, as you know, there is direct money that will, because you're both cities, although Cyprus just barely falls under the 50,000, cities of over 50,000 will receive money uh, directly, which will be help them with revenues that are lost. Um, cities with lower than 50,000 will get that money through the county, the county of Orange. And so uh, Los Alamitos can get up to two, a little over $2 million. As you know, Cyprus, a little over $9 million, and Seal Beach over $4 million. But other monies that you will either be administering or be for residents in your city are things like, and I've already mentioned, uh, rent is relief and mortgage relief, but we also have four and a half billion dollars for low income home energy assistance, $50 million for drinking water and wastewater services. Uh, there's 30 million billion uh, in uh, grants for, for uh, to the uh, Federal Transit Administration for operating expenses for public transit. There's full, um, a little under $5 billion for homeless assistance, $200 million for museums and library services. And then there's block grants for the county can apply for and, and also cities for community mental health services, which we've seen a tremendous need for now during this pandemic for, for mental health services, for prevention and treatment of substance abuse and other community programs or problems. So there's a lot of either direct money that's going to cities or indirectly monies that you will be administering or will be sent to your, or your residents can apply for. And so this, it's a tremendous um, attempt to get people back. And I think what the way the president uh, describes it very quickly is there are really, it, it, it's trying to crush this virus uh, and, ingen and to generate an inclusive, recovery with shots in the arms, money in the pockets, children in schools, and people in, in jobs. And those are the shorthand way of where this money is being targeted in the, in the, in the uh, Recovery Act. Very good, thank you. Uh, I think you've covered what we had in the second question. So I'm gonna jump down to question four and ask you, uh, uh, the supply of COVID vaccine, we've, we've listened on a weekly basis to our local uh, health officials, and uh, it has uh, grown incrementally, but uh, with a population of over 3 million people, um, it's taking a little longer than was than some residents had hoped for. So I was wondering, uh, what is uh, President Biden or the, the uh, you know, federal government able to do to help ensure that we can get uh, the uh, vaccinations as uh, the president has committed to? That's a great question. And whether it was under the previous president, President Trump, who started the process of making sure that we would create these vaccines or President uh, Biden, who has really taken on as his major objective, making sure that everybody will get a virus or will get a vaccine. So anybody who wishes to have it. And uh, what we're seeing is that Every city and every community, not only in Orange County, but in the state and also nationwide, uh, wants more vaccines. Nobody is saying, hey, we have too many vaccines. We want to give it, you know, Seal Beach wants to give their vaccines to Los Alamitos or Orange County wants to give their vaccines to Riverside County. That's just not what's going on. But what has been given out has far outpaced what we really even thought was possible at this time. When President uh, Biden came into office, he wanted to administer 100 million vaccines in the first 100 days, but they already administered 100 million vaccines out, and that's what the federal government gets it out the door in the first 58 days. 
Um, so as of today, we've already administered just under 130 million, and it's only about 60 days or so since. So we've gotten more out, but you're right, everybody wants more. And as I say, this administration and this Congress is doing everything it can to get shots in the arms every day. That bill that I just talked about really puts a tremendous amount of money into uh, paying for these vaccines because people are not paying for these vaccines. And so you're getting these vaccines out. Um, and they're putting out resources like ne they've never had. Uh, as of today, I think over 1 million doses have come into Orange County now. And so Orange County is on where, given where the state is, who is making the decisions about, the federal government has to give you the vaccine. That's, and when we first started, there were not enough vaccines. You know, everybody wanted them and we all didn't have enough even, you know, we didn't have the Johnson & Johnson at that time. We had primarily the Pfizer, which was the first. We now have three major ones that are out there. Uh, and the federal government is putting out resources like never before, and it's up to the states to decide what are the criteria. Uh, and I will tell you that California is doing the best they can now, and Orange County is getting their share of it. Nobody's getting more than Orange County based upon population. As I say, they've already gotten over a million vaccines. It's never going to be enough as of <laughs> right now, and I hear you, and it's reasonable. That's what your job should be as your mayor standing up and fighting for your community for more vaccines because you know how important it is for everybody to get vaccinated. But it's coming by May, which is only a month away. A little, everyone will have access to a vaccine, everyone in Orange County. So it's coming and I appreciate your asking and you're right, there aren't enough, but we, we have to thank the scientists and what these companies have done. We have turned out vaccines like we never thought ever possible in this nation. A year ago, we had no understanding of the virus, and now we have vaccinated 130 million people in the United States, over a million in Orange County. Great. Thank you. Uh, Congressman Lowenthal, what uh, what resources are available in the Rescue America plan to strengthen education and to ensure schools will be fully reopened uh, for the uh, fall school year? Well, as I mentioned, one of the goals of, of, of the of it is, I think the president called it, children in schools. The object is how we're going to get kids back into school. And um, the first thing is, you know, the federal government will fund all these educational institutions, but it's not the federal government's role to run the schools. That decision about how the schools will be run, who will open, who will not, uh, is either done through the states or it's, it, it's, it's done through local school districts. That's really where the decision is. And so, uh, and what we've done now is to fund every school district that needs money for supplies, for PPE equipment, for testing, which is a major thing if they're gonna open fully, if they need testing, for vaccinations, for ventilation retrofits, anything that a school might need to reopen safely. It's now up to the we, this money has just been passed. Now we got to getting it out the door. The money will go to the schools. It's now up to the uh, the state and the local school boards to decide what's the best way of getting kids back in the classroom. Uh, and many school districts in Orange County want to reopen, and many have already done so. Yeah, as you know, Los Alamitos Unified is already offering hybrid and direct in instructions. Uh, part online, part in person. Cypress Elementary is offering full-time in-person ins instruction. So we now, the big focus is getting kids back. What the federal government can do is to tell those schools, we will, we now have put, I think it's over $130 billion into education to retrofit schools to do what you need to get those schools open in any way. And it's now up to the local school districts to get that money and to apply for it and to uh, do the things that they need. Thank you. And, and uh, just to touch on that, will, will reopening fully uh, in the fall be required in order to uh, receive federal funds? Uh, I, 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 I don't know if, if, 
it, it will be. I don't think there will be a requirement for that. We're hoping by the fall that every school district has the, has the resources. We've got the funds out the door. We're hoping to get that all done this spring and to have the money in place to have the things that they need to reopen. Uh, uh, so if they need it, they should have applied for it between now and the fall because our goal is to get have every school open by by the fall. I'm not sure, and I can go back whether we're gonna withhold money after that if they decide not to. But our goal is, that's why the, there's a tremendous amount of money in here directly to schools for the kinds of things that they need to get kids back safely. We've already started vaccination of teachers, state of California, I think one of the issues is for people to feel safe is to have all teachers vaccinated. That will happen before by May, every teacher in the state of California will be vaccinated. So that is all gonna be there. Um, and, um, and hopefully schools have spent their money by, by the fall, you know, that they're not doing it after the fall, they're spending it before <laughs> the fall. Uh, but I'll have to look on that where the f f other monies that were coming that just, uh, if they refuse to do it, I do believe that those decisions are gonna be made by the local communities and, this, and the state in, in terms of what the state allows what the zip, what the, you know, in terms of allowing local communities, and then it's up to the local community to decide what they want to do. I don't think the federal government really does that. Our job is to get you that money to do what we think is critically necessary to get every kid back in school by the fall. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's great news. I know uh, parents are very anxious to get the schools back open fully. And we are too. I think the nation yeah. is, is yeah. and Orange County leads the nation in, in, in educational opportunities for their kids, and, and the nation wants to get their kids back to school. Right. Uh, going back to uh, vac vaccine and vaccinations, you've mentioned that we have three uh, vaccines that have been approved, the Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. Uh, there's been some um, concern, I think, in, in Europe, at least, about the AstraZeneca. Can you share anything about any uh, uh, additional vaccines that are uh, going to be coming available? Um, well, right now, as you, as you pointed out, with the president, we have, we're making the assumption with now that Merck and the, under the administration has really pushed Merck and Johnson and Johnson to form a coalition, a coordination between those companies so that a number of Merck facilities will be just dedicated to the production of Johnson and Johnson vaccines. So we now believe as, and we still have not approved in this nation yet the, uh, uh, the, the, the fourth vaccine that you mentioned, the AstraZeneca. What, what we do know is with the three vaccines that we have already, Johnson and Johnson, there, are, there will be sufficient vaccines to vaccinate over 350 million or 300, whatever the numbers are in the United States by May. Can we speed it up? Well, we still haven't, we still have not, uh, the, and I don't know when that will come, approved uh, the fourth vaccine. Uh, uh, I, I think that the Center for Disease Control and the FDA were, uh, were about to do that, were soon to do that. There were some questions that were raised about the fourth vaccine that they're now trying to answer. Uh, uh, they're, they're, we want to make sure, and I think it is, but you know, one of the nice things about all of this is nothing goes on the market, nothing goes into people's arms until it's until we've had long-term studies to, to measure its effectiveness. And that means about, and effectiveness can be measured in multiple ways. One is, does it keep you from ever getting any symptoms? Two, does it keep you from going into the hospital? And does it keep you from dying? You know, I have numbers of deaths. All three of the approved vaccine, 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 vaccines, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, and Pfizer, 100% of the people that have been tested and have not died, have never had, there has not been any deaths or major hospitalizations. There's some differences in whether you get, you can get mild symptoms from it, mild to moderate symptoms. Uh, but the real thing that we want from these vaccines is to keep you from getting very sick, going into a hospital and, and, uh, uh, and, and unfortunately dying. And these, the vaccines, 
But the critical thing is not so much necessarily it's for all of us it is not so much getting that fourth vaccine, but telling everybody because there are uh, uh, the, this virus keeps uh, uh, changing its form. Uh, we've got to get everybody vaccinated right away. If you are eligible for the vaccine in California or in Orange County, get it now. It is safe, complete. We have, you know, we have never had a testing protocol like we've had on these vaccines ever. And they're safe. And it's critically important with the variants out there that we get everybody vaccinated before the, these variants really take a hold and do things. And so, because that will keep, keep us from being, that will make us safe. And so my message to you is not so much what the fourth one is, it'd be great to have another one out there, we'll see. But with the three that we have, we are gonna vaccinate everybody by May. But if they take advantage of it, the big issue is going to be now getting that group of folks that are kind of reluctant to get the vaccine to do it. And I think we've, they've now seen no, because there are so many people that have been vaccinated, we're not seeing any ill effects of the vaccine. I mean, people aren't saying they, they've heard from their cousin or somebody that they, you know, they got very sick. That's not happening. Right. And that may help us tremendously because there was, you know, people say, hey, that happened, you know, it developed so fast. They, are we sure it's safe? I'll wait until I know. Well, we've done that. We've now over, as I say, over 128 million people have been vaccinated and there's been nobody has had a serious, serious uh, effect of this vaccine. Yeah, our family is about halfway through and we're looking forward to finishing up. And that's, that's exactly good news. right. And we're moving at a much faster rate and it's going to get done much quicker now than it did earlier. And I think that's important news that, uh, you know, Merck is going to produce the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, that's right. which is the uh, one in one shot uh, protocol, which will uh, that's accelerate right. the process even more. So that's great news. Thank you. That's right. And we've also found that those people who do not have health insurance or have or reluct or haven't had it or homeless folks, it's been very hard to get them to come in to take the vaccine also. And so we're doing much more outreach. Your cities, Orange County is doing a large vaccination centers and the one shot Johnson & Johnson is gonna help a lot for people who uh, uh, are hard to identify at this moment and may be difficult to get them back for the second shot. Thank you. Thank you. We, we know that uh, both of our cities and, and at Seal Beach as well, I believe, uh, are definitely pushing out the message of the importance of the getting vaccinated uh, as soon as you are able to. So that's uh, great. Um, as our uh, federal representative on all issues, including non-COVID issues like transportation, uh, many other things that you're involved in in Congress, can you give us some insight into what pieces of legislation we'll be seeing coming out of Congress this year? Um, and related to that, you know, what is uh, Congress's general infrastructure plan? Well, you've just put your finger on what is, let me just make sure I'm back on, on Zoom. I seem to have lost it for a second. Just let me get back on and then I'll be right there. But you seem to have put your finger on it. The big piece of legislation um, I think we, we've temporarily lost uh, Congressman Lowenthal. Well, I'm sure he'll rejoin us shortly. Yes. So, well, that, I think, you know, is, is the message is really great news about the, the uh, vaccine and the uh, production. Uh, I know I've talked to a number of folks who have expressed a preference for the Johnson & Johnson, so having a, uh, a larger supply of that uh, in the near future will be very uh, beneficial and very welcome uh, for our uh, residents. Absolutely. And it, uh, you know, for some folks who have a hard time taking two days, I'm, two, I'm two back. separate times off of work. I'm, I'm back and I'll try to be real quick on, on the answer. Thank you for the question about where we are. We're preparing now a large infrastructure package. Um, that, in, that will be, you know, uh, cover many issues facing Orange County and, and the nation. Uh, uh, and we haven't done an infrastructure. Hopefully that will be a bipartisan 
package. We have not really, the last one was not really bipartisan. Hopefully this is. Uh, we're all, I think that both parties understand the need for infrastructure coming up. We'll see, there'll be differences in the amount and how we do it, but this is, this should be a bipartisan, at least approach. My, one of my priorities on this and the infrastructure package is going to be goods movement, making sure that we have highway systems, that we have transportation, that we, we move towards zero emission trucks uh, and, and rail, as we've seen that, uh, uh, and that we, we deal with some of the huge congestion issues that that moving goods, the moving goods, but the ports of LA and in my district, Port of Long Beach, have a tremendous boom to jobs in the entire region. But they also bring certain downsides, pollution, um, uh, congestion of great. And so we're this. I'm hope we're all hoping that that will be the most. We also have hopefully there are many things in this infrastructure package that we can increase upon. I've been a great supporter of the both Sunburst, Starbase. Uh, joined, you know, the JC, the joined, uh, 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 joined, joined forces is, training base. Yes. Right. Joined forces training base. I got caught up thinking about the JCPOA, which is the uh, non-proliferation, nuclear non-proliferation, and then I couldn't get back at, away from the from that. But yes, uh, the Joint Forces Training Base, Jay, wonderful. We we want to make sure that there are additional resources for that. Uh, as we do this in the transportation, for the first time, the Congress, Republicans and Democrats, have both agreed to bring back. Um, what used to be called at least uh, which uh, earmarks a little bit, as long as they're publicly, they come from the cities, they come, there are projects. And so you're going to be, your cities will be hearing in the next couple of weeks about what are the, the uh, qualifications. And it has to be a very public process. These are projects that have to have a lot of community support. Nobody is guaranteeing anybody get, is going to get anything. But in, the Congress is now feeling that instead of the, the president and the administration deciding on all the projects that get done in our budget, it's time for the Congress to have some, some say. And so they're trying to get rid of the, some of the negative things that occurred with the earmarks where it was, began and to really limit it, and, but to have a very public process in terms of what would be what are considered community projects. We don't know whether it's going to work or not. Both parties have agreed that this is something they, they at least want to try if it can be done in a fair way and, and not to be exploited. So you're going to be hearing about that. That'll be part of this also, this infrastructure package, however that gets worked out. So that's kind of what I see going to happen. Um, you know, in, in coming up, that'll, that will dominate starting in March, end of March, April, and May, the Congress will be putting together this infrastructure package. And it will be more than just streets and roads and bridges. It will be, you know, broadband. It will be refitting and redoing much of our educational systems. And education will be a tremendous, will benefit greatly from the infrastructure that it needs also, wastewater, stormwater, recycling issues are going to be critically important in the infrastructure package. That's it. Thank you. Great. Uh, Congressman, uh, Mark, I'd like to change our format just a little bit and ask you to take question number eight that was on our list because we've been getting a lot of questions from uh, related to businesses and, and where, uh, if you have any additional details on in the uh, American Rescue Plan and, uh, of what might be available for businesses, small businesses like the, you know, that we have the Paycheck Protection Program and loans. Well, and there, how can they businesses go, best go find out about this? Well, there are a couple of ways. One is if they're really having difficulties with their local banks to contact our office and to make sure that that we can help facilitate. Uh, when they're not getting answers, because it's a, it, you know, most of the P, the PPP is a program that usually goes through where people apply through their regular, their bank. If they don't have 
accounts in a bank. You know, we're trying to make credit unions and all other kind of local community investment investment programs and also places where they can apply to broaden that base. Uh, they're in what makes this different, a little different than the, uh, uh, there are a couple of things than the uh, uh, previous programs is this one has a, in, has a carve out about $30 billion just for restaurants and mm. restaurants have been badly hurt in this and they'll go through the same process going through a bank applying like PPP, but it's only for restaurants and small restaurants, small business, okay. not major chains and that. We also have, uh, we, and I worked on actually on it, for shuttered venues uh, and how they can apply. We, we started to do that in the December package, but then we realized there were mistakes that were in it, that many of these shuttered venues, museums, uh, libraries that had closed down and they applied for PPP. And then when we did it in December, we said to those and vast number of businesses that were shuttered, uh, well, you can't, if you apply for a PPP loan, you can't then apply for what was called the, the uh, shuttered venue investment grants for the grants for shuttered. Well, they said, I, there's more money in the shuttered venue stuff, but we said, you can't do both. We realized that was a huge mistake. If people had tried for the PPP now and they hadn't gotten their money, they just need to return that money if they're getting a larger amount of money in the shuttered venue. So, and then there's a large, they can work with, there are large numbers of loans that we have also put through the SB, Small Business Association, and they can go through the SBA, the Small Business Administration, SBA, to get those kinds of loans. So it's either go through the, their banks for the PPP, look, find out more about the shuttered venues, that also goes through the banks, also those, uh, and there's also lots of projects, small business projects through the SBA, uh, Small Business Administration. That's just getting up and running from December, and it's just starting up. So that, that money will get used up pretty quickly in the next, I would think, next three weeks or so, month. So that, this is a great time to get people to either contact the SBA or contact their banks about what's, what's available. Great. Thank you very much. Congressman Lothar, I noticed a, a question uh, from one of our school board members has been posted in the chat. And whether you know this, I know it's a, a very detailed and extensive uh, plan, the, the Rescue America plan, but do you know whether uh, there are funds being specifically designated to school districts uh, to support on-campus mental health services? Well, I think that I will get back to you about that. That's a great question, and I'm not sure about it, so, but... In the bill, there's been much more emphasis on community mental health and mental health services. So whether the specifically on campus, I don't know. There should be uh, in that because one of the things that we have discovered in this is that the, the mental health needs of the country over the last year have tremendously increased in, or at least maybe made public. Uh, the amount of substance abuse, depression, anxiety, of, of all people, not just those that are need serious, has out been elevated in terms of it's a difficult coping situation. And so uh, for schools to get back functioning, I agree, they, we're gonna need to get mental health services to them when they need it, you know, to destigmatize it, to think, to understand that this is, this is part of the problems of stress dealing with stress, which we've all been exposed to, creates different kinds of coping skills and leads to frequently in regular folks, increases in anxiety and depression. It just is one of the consequences of, of having to deal with such extreme stress and changing in your regular life, you know, patterns and behavior and what you do and not being around those people frequently who are your biggest support. So we've got to get that. And I'll get back to you, the mayor, about, uh, about mental health services in schools. Thanks, Congressman. All right, Congressman, we've uh, gotten some questions online also about uh, you know, reopening things uh, in addition to the businesses, things like uh, playgrounds and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, do you envision as the vaccines uh, roll out and more and more people are vaccinated that will there'll be some easing in the, in the tiered 
system that the state has? Do you? Well, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We can bring those more and more vaccines, the numbers, you know, we've kind of plateaued a little bit. We've come down, way down, but we've kind of plateaued. If we can keep vaccinating people and, and people continue now, it's not just the vaccinations, it's that we have to realize that, well, we have offered more relief in terms of, of small gatherings and, and opening up of stores and opening up more. We still have to practice social distancing and mask wearing. If we can do that and increase the vaccinations, we are going to see, you know, by the summer, you know, uh, opening up of, of everything, things like school, like playgrounds and others. But again, it's not a magic thing. We're all responsible for doing that. It's not the government that's going to do it. The government is just going to respond to the to where the numbers are, the state government or, or the county government or the federal government. And we, but everybody knows that we've done a great job up until now. But it's time, you know, as 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 Dr. Fauci says, we're on the five yard line. Let's not fumble it now before we get into the end zone. And to answer that question, let's all do our part. Get vaccinated, wear a mask, keep social distancing, and wash your hands. More important than ever to do that. Right. Yeah. I know there's a lot of community uh, interest in getting back out for the concerts on the green and the race on the base and those kinds of things. So we're, and We'd love we're to do it and we're going to do it. But And doing it and as we do it, let's just make sure that we act... And we, we act in ways that bring this virus down, you know, and, and what we can do. And the vaccine will help tremendously. Great. Mark, do you have any additional questions? You know, we, since we have a few minutes, I, I do have, uh, I did notice one additional question, which is more directed towards, uh, towards Los Alamitos and Cyprus. But, but uh, it is that uh, what are Los Alamitos and Cyprus doing to encourage skeptical people to get vaccinated? And how can local residents help in that? effort. And I think the congressman talked about this a lot about, uh, you know, the fact that over 100 million, 130 million, I think he said, uh, 128 American, million. 128. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, that's increasing substantially every day. Um, the data is what what I think helps. And I know in Los Alamitos, and I know you have too, as well, Mayor Pete, talked about the fact that the, the science and the data show that these vaccines are safe. Uh, that uh, they are very extremely effective, particularly in terms of death and serious il illnesses. Um, but 100 percent you know, effective. We've never had a vaccine that's 100 percent effective in that. It, yeah, right. It's 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 incredible. So I think we have to keep pushing that message out. We have to push out the message that we all want to get back to uh, normal life, right, as quickly as possible. Vaccine is the number one uh, tool by which we do that. Obviously, social distancing and mask wearing uh, as well, but, but the vaccine is the number one method by, by which we get back to normal life. So we'll continue pushing that message. I'm, I'm sure Mayor Pete, you will, and, and the city of Cyprus will, uh, and, and I imagine Seal Beach is doing the same as well. Um, so I think we do that, and, and same thing to the residents. You know, the, the question was, how do residents push that message out? social media, you know, talking to your friends and your family. Um, and, and there's a lot of data out there, a lot of information which supports the efficacy and the safety of these vaccines. So I, right. I would encourage everybody now residents. knows people that have been vaccinated. Everybody right. out there knows that nobody ever has not had dire curse, you know, results of being vaccinated. That's just not what this vaccine does. Right. And, uh, and, and it's unbelievably effective. So let's just do it. We, we are blessed that we have the scientists in this country and the drug companies that have come together to work together. Uh, and um, we now have the people have, have supported the payment of all this. You can't say, well, I'm not doing it because it costs too much. <laughs> it's done. Let's just right. get it done. And uh, thank you for, for raising that issue and, and educating your, your community, Mayor Chirko. Sure, thank you. Uh, Mayor Pete, if, if you have no more questions, we can thank, thank uh, Congressman uh, Lowenthal for joining us. Thank you, Congressman, for your expertise, your experience, uh, for being uh, willing to listen to the residents of uh, West Orange County. Um, th thank you very much. And uh, just for everyone on the, on the line or watching, 
Our next town hall will be April 7th uh, during the lunch hour, and it will feature State Senator Josh Newman. Uh, with so much going on on the state level, this will be a town hall you will not want to miss. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you both. And thank you the residents of Cyprus and Los Alamitos. Great. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care.